Hi there, and welcome to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you guys my journey as a beginner machinist and any tips and tricks I pick up along the way. So just a quick midweek video. I thought because a couple of people have asked about the wiring on the stepper motor, I'll quickly run through how I've wired it up and hopefully that will help any of you guys out thinking about wiring up a stepper motor yourself. So first of all, let's just quickly look at the stepper motor that we've got here. So this is a NEMA style 4.2 amp stepper motor and it's got four wires coming off of it. What do those four wires mean? Well, inside here is two sets of coils and two wires go to each coil. So the first thing you need to know is which two wires go to which coil. So to do that, we're gonna do a continuity test. So you're gonna to need to grab yourself a multimeter, set it to ohms, and then you wanna check the wires and see which wires have a slight bit of resistance on them. You're not looking for open circuit, you're looking for a couple of ohms of resistance. So here we go, we've found it straight away actually. So we've got one 1.1 1 .1 ohm resistance there. And just to double check the other ones. Yeah, we've got 1.1 ohm, 1 .1 ohm resistance there. So we know in my case that the white and green wire and the blue and yellow wire pair together. So that's the first bit of information you need to get because you need to wire this up to your stepper motor controller. Next, we're gonna go over to my circuit board and check out how I've wired that up and I'll explain all that to you as we go along. So inside this electrical box is everything we need to get the stepper motor to work. I'm basically gonna walk you through now, start to finish how this thing works. So to start off with, we've got our household electricity that comes in here. So this is 230 volts, we've got a live neutral on earth, and that goes to a PSU unit. So this here is a power supply unit, and basically what it does, it converts household electricity to 24 volts DC output with a 10 amp maximum current. So on the 24 volt output side, we've got two negatives and two positives. So this is like a two channel 24 volt output. So let's follow these outputs now and see where they go. So we're just gonna look at the positives because the negatives are gonna go to the same place. So our first positive actually comes down and goes into our stepper control unit. So on the stepper control unit, we've got this part here, high voltage. It's not really that high voltage, that's just how they've named it. But basically on that side of it, you've got your voltage negative and your voltage plus. So that's your plus and negative that come from your 24 volt DC output. You've then got your A plus, A minus, B plus and B minus. So these are your four wires that come from your coil. So that's why you need to know what pairs go where, because it doesn't really matter in what order you choose them, just as long as you choose the right pair. So A plus, A plus and A negative will go with the two wires that you've got continuity on, and B plus and B negative will be the other two wires that you've got continuity on. So that's now, we've got our power going to the stepper control unit and the power going to the stepper motor itself. Next thing we need to do is let's look at where this other voltage goes to. So it actually comes down to our pulse width modulation control unit. Down here we've got our plus and negative. So the reason you need one of these pulse width modulations is they send a signal back to the control unit which basically allows for direction and speed to be set on a dial and on a switch. So let's look at how these signals come back from here to the control unit. So down here, you've got your outputs. So these two here are your 24 volt inputs and these three here are your outputs. So first of all, you've got a negative, which they've actually labeled this up as EN on here, but it's the negative, which comes down here and it comes back into the controller on the signal side. So because we've only got one negative output, I've had to splice that down here and split it into two because we need an output negative for the direction and also an output negative for the pulse. So that's been shared between them two. And then the other two positives coming out of here are for our pulse and our direction. So labelled up on here, you've got PU. That stands for pulse. 
and DR which we're using is direction. Once you've got your pulse output and your direction output to the controller, that's pretty much all the wiring sorted. The only thing that I've added differently is my voltage out to the controller. I've split that and added it onto a switch so that way I can turn the controller on and off on the flick of a switch so it's not always permanently on because the way these stepper motors work is they're held in position using some voltage so if they're always permanently on the stepper motor is going to get really hot even at idle. So with all, all our wiring done the only thing left to do now is set our dip switches. So the dip switches are really easy to set because it's all labelled here on the controller. So all you've got to do is find what current your motor is. So mine's a 4.2 amp motor. So from that it tells you what switch one, switch two and switch three should be on. So all three of mine are on the off position, which you'll find down here. Next thing is for switch four. So down here it says switch four, off is half current and on is full current. So I've set mine to on because I want it to run at full current. And then after that, switch five, six, seven, and eight. Depending on how quick you want this to run, you've got a pulse per revolution. So looking down the chart there, you can see all the different pulse per revolutions. I've gone to set mine on the slowest possible pulse per revolution, just because what I'm using this for, I don't need it to run fast. So because of that, switch five is off, switch six is on, switch seven is on and switch eight is also on. So once you've got all that set up, your dip switches, your ins and outs, you're ready to see if your stepper motor works. So that is a stepper motor control unit circuit and a stepper motor itself. This is all you'll need to get your stepper motor to work manually. If you're thinking about going down the CNC route, then there's a couple of more bits that you'll need to get this to work. But for me, operating this manually, this is all I need to get this to work. If you're thinking about doing one of these yourself, I'll leave a link in the description to all the parts that I've used. And if I can't find the exact parts, I'll find links on eBay and Amazon to where you can buy similar products. But other than that, guys, quick little midweek video. Hope this has helped some of you out. If it has, then please like and subscribe below. But for now, that's all. I'll see you in the next one, guys.